Now this video will make some of you feel really, really old. And I can't help it, that is usually how it goes with these kind of anniversary videos. You see, another year has gone by, and with that I mean another year of Mountain Blade Napoleonic Wars goodness, of course. On this day, 11 years ago, the game was released as a multiplayer DLC expansion pack for Mountain Blade Warband. Last year I released a special video dedicated to a decade of Napoleonic Wars, and where I asked many players to send me a clip and share a story or something that they liked about this game. It's probably the biggest video I made in terms of planning, as I asked both players that were more active in the competitive scene, but also casual players and other YouTubers. If you haven't seen that particular video yet, then I highly recommend you to go check it out. Now for its 11th birthday, I wanted to keep it simple, but still pay tribute to this amazing game and all the people that worked on it, because they did one hell of a job. So I decided I'm going to review this game. Yes, I know it's 2023 and it's been out for 11 years, but I noticed by scrolling through my list of videos that I actually never made an official review on the game, and that is something that this game doesn't deserve in my opinion. Yes, I talked about it loads of times and I made hundreds of gameplay videos, but I thought it was about time that I dedicated a special video to this topic in order to give you guys my honest opinion on the game and the wonderful moments I experienced and still am experiencing to this day because I am still a regimental leader and I attend events in this golden oldie of a game at the time of this recording. So that having said, sit back, relax and enjoy the rest of the video. Mountain Blade Napoleonic Wars was created by Flying Squirrel Entertainment as a DLC expansion pack for the game Mountain Blade Warband and it was released back in 2012. If there is ever a game that falls under the category of stand the test of time, then this is one of those. Its community 11 years after release still very active and crucial to this game's success. Mountain Blade Napoleonic Wars is a multiplayer only game where up to 200 players can play on a server with different game modes they can choose from in order to do battle. The setting of the game being that of the Napoleonic Wars, a series of conflicts fought between the First French Empire under Napoleon against an array of European coalitions in the early 19th century. The game thus, to recreate this historical setting, includes tons of weapons, artillery pieces, uniforms and several factions players can pick from to experience more or less what it was like fighting during that time period. I mentioned the community being of vital importance to this game's success, and thus the multiplayer roleplay aspect and loyalty of the player base is included in my review. I started playing Mountain Blade Napoleonic Wars back in 2013 when I was 17 to 18 years old. I was fully aware that the game was multiplayer only, having seen quite a bit of gameplay videos on YouTube from various creators such as Malakit Skadi and Chatopia. Just a fun fact in between, before I joined the Mountain Blade community I was already familiar with this type of musket game. Maybe some of you will remember Battlegrounds 2, which was I believe a modification where you needed Half-Life 2 deathmatch 4 in order to play it. I could be wrong, but that was released somewhere around 2010-2011. In any case, that game was my first experience with multiplayer line battles, though Battlegrounds was set in the American Revolutionary War, where you could play as either the British or the Americans fighting for freedom and self-government. So back to the year 2013 when I first played Mountain Blade Napoleonic Wars, I joined a regiment, like so many others did in the months and year before me when the game was at its absolute height so shortly after release. Steadily I climbed my way up the ladder. I went from recruit to private in the 22nd Cheshire Regiment of Foot in about a year's time and eventually I ended up helping my cousin create our own regiment in 2014. Along the way I got to meet many other players and form a strong bond with them, similar to how I imagined back then soldiers got to know and rely upon one another during these battles, except we were playing a game of course. Eventually our group got invited to join a brigade known as the Les Gardes Suisse. We created the 6C Regiment d'Infanterie Suisse, otherwise known as the Swiss 6C. Eventually I took over command and skipping a few years we renamed ourselves to the 5 year Regiment d'Infanterie in 2017 and then the 5th The Condemned Regiment of Foot 
in 2020 as part of the Royal Guards Brigade where we still attend events to this day. The reason I briefly talk about my history in this game from rookie to officer is because it is tied to the multiplayer community and the way that the game is played and organized. As it is mainly focused on multiplayer and we are talking about servers that could fill up to 200 players with 100 on each side, some form of structure is needed in order to have balanced, fair and fun line or siege battles. Now as a casual player you could also decide not to join a single regiment and still play this game. There are a few servers that are hosted where you can just jump into an ongoing battle or siege and fight alongside others, though these battles won't look like the ones that you get when you join properly organized events. We're talking about forming lines similar to the way that battles were fought in that particular era. You had regiments signing up beforehand in order to get specialty slots such as the cavalry, artillery or skirmisher class. Teamspeak and Discord being ways for officers to communicate with their regimental members as you don't have an in-game voice option, which you do have in some of the games released in the past few years that were in one way or another inspired by Mountain Blade Napoleonic Wars. You, by the way, yeah, make, make sure you subscribe to the French monk. Who's the French well, monk? He's That's like a YouTuber. YouTuber. He, he, he does hold fast YouTube. He doesn't do enough hold fast. He doesn't do enough of it. He needs to do more. So, having an active and loyal community in order to get these events going was vital to the success of this game. Because once you spawned on such a field of battle, with 99 other players on your side against 100 enemy players, that feeling was just absolutely incredible. Working together with other regiments, both within and outside of your own community, in order to come up with strategies to outflank or outsmart the opponent, whilst the men that you are trying to lead are eagerly waiting their chance to influence the course of the battle. Knowing that the other side were not mindless bots, but also players, made it all the more intense knowing they could be trying to do something too. So yeah, in short, the community really plays a big role in the success of this game, and as there are still many players active in 2023, it only further proves how great this game really is. In order to understand why people enjoyed this game so much, we'll have to dive further into the nitty gritty of it. Upon starting Mountain Blade Napoleonic Wars, you come upon the main menu. With the Napoleonic Wars era music starting in the background, you're already starting to feel like you're going back in time. I mentioned the game is described as multiplayer only, or mainly focused on multiplayer, and when you start up the game you will notice that there actually is a single player option where you can start playing on a battle map of your own choosing and add bots to the teams. I used this mode in the early days as a way to get familiar with the settings and later down the line I had other players give me lessons on the gameplay mechanics and more advanced tactics and commands that they used in events. So once you are ready to jump into the multiplayer action, one of the first things you have to do when you click on the multiplayer option is the creation of your own character. You can fill in your name and if you are part of a online community that has a regiment set up, you'll be writing specific tags of said community along with your rank and name. Next to that you can choose a banner which most regiments in early days stuck to, a specific one, though that is less important these days. Then you will see the list of multiplayer servers, as mentioned a few of these are open to the public where you can join ongoing battles by yourself or with friends. These are considered to be more casual battles as they do not require players to line up for example and follow officers. If you are part of a community that has signed up for an official event, you will get server details along with a password from your commanding officer. Now that you're in the server, I'm able to talk about the various nations that you can play as, as well as the different classes and the gameplay mechanics. As of 2023, there are six nations to choose from. You have Great Britain, France, Prussia, Russia, Austria, and last but not least, the Rheinbund, which was introduced in 2017. With more than 395 unique units to play from, it offers the players something that every good game needs, namely, variety. It also makes the battles more lively to see all these different uniforms and colors on the battlefield. The battles in this game are intense, to say the least. These can go from besieging to fighting on the open plains or defending a river crossing. This game makes it feel like you are part of the battle, with every player getting the chance to prove themselves and secure that victory. The gameplay relies heavily on the gameplay Warband offers. This time, however, there's no such thing as bows or crossbows or catapults, 
but you will get to fight with muskets, rifles, flintlock pistols, cannons, mortars and so on to defeat your opponent. These weapons all have their pros and cons, you know. Muskets are not that accurate when it comes to greater distances, whilst rifles are more reliable at that front, though both will take you a while to reload after each shot fired. Remember, you're not playing around with modern assault weapons. This is the 19th century, baby. For those interested to play with the big guns, the cannons can use normal cannonballs to hit targets at a great distance, but also canister in case enemy troops are very close, whilst mortars and howitzers can use shells that will explode on impact. You will have various classes that you can choose from in order to spawn the cannon, reload the cannon, but also guard them and help navigate them by picking the officer class which enables you to use the spy class, a tool most helpful to spot whether or not your shots are landing as intended. Shooting may not always be accurate, so for those favoring combat in close quarters, your main weapon will be the bayonet. But there are also different kind of swords and scimitars that you could use depending on the class you spawn as. The four directional melee system gives players the option to block or attack in four different directions, depending on their weapon. This gameplay can lead to really intense moments where one can even chamber block an incoming attack by meeting it with your own weapon, or even with your bare fists. Whilst you can consider this gameplay mechanic broken, it is something that many players have come to love about this wonderful game. Next to that, the melee system in Mountain Blade Napoleonic Wars has been the source of inspiration for many other musket based games, trying to replicate that mechanic, though often never quite achieved that same experience, which made sure that after each new game that got released, the Napoleonic Wars community tested that new game, with most of them returning to their beloved Mountain Blade DLC. Now in case you don't like your first weapon of choice throughout the battle, you could pick up a sword or a musket from a fallen comrade or enemy player. No doubt there will be many of those lying around when you're near the end of a battle. Naturally cavalry is the class to go if you wish to be more mobile, there is also a lot of variety in terms of these troops, from heavy to light cavalry, with light cavalry being a lot faster, but you could also opt for the dragoon class, allowing you to spawn with muskets and fire those whilst on horseback or when dismounted. Then you have the lancers that act as your anti-cavalry cavalry unit. Let's move on to the maps. Most of these are randomly generated, though players could and can create their own maps. These all look relatively similar to one another, though there are quite some gems in there too. I remember fighting a few Napoleonic Wars battles on Lord of the Rings maps, such as Minas Tirith, Elven Cities, and so on. As I said though, most are rather similar, especially the random generated ones that offer plains, hilly plains, dense forests, snow and or desert maps. The game's two main modes, as briefly touched upon, are battles and sieges. If you are playing a siege, you have an attacking team and a defending team. The attacking team has infinite lives, whilst the defending team has 5 lives per each player, along with a time limit. They pretty much have to hold the town or fort till the time runs out and they win. With the battle mode, each team spawns with only one life per player and you fight it out in rounds. This is the game mode that line battles are played on. Then you have a various amount of other game modes you can play, such as deathmatch with each player on their own, team deathmatch with two teams, and then there's also some custom game modes players created, such as a zombie survival, but I also saw a really cool way of making a line battle event into a continuous battle with flag bearers acting as spawn points and a ticket system allowing for players to respawn on their respective flags until they run out of tickets and then they can spawn no more. Really neat stuff. Then there's the game's soundtracks, which are all these epic classics really immersing players into the Napoleonic era setting. You also have the in-game musicians being able to play certain tunes or soundtracks whilst the fight is underway. This makes for epic moments, but sometimes also silly moments, as I'm sure Chapman as caster would agree. He captured quite a few silly moments in general, to be fair. So I am going to give this game a 9 out of 10, simply because I don't believe in perfect games. I've spent 2264 hours by the time of this recording, and this according to Steam on Warband. I'm fairly sure that 2000 plus of those hours I've spent on the DLC alone, which falls under that game in terms of playtime according to Steam. 
The game's graphics, even this long after release, don't throw me off. It is the gameplay experience and the multiplayer community that made this game a true classic. If you wish to buy and play Mountain Blade Napoleonic Wars, keep in mind that you need to buy the main Mountain Blade Warband game in order to run this separate DLC. It's on a relatively low price, but if you are close to a sales period, then I'd suggest you wait until then to get it on an even lower price. That was my review on Mountain Blade Napoleonic Wars, and I wish the game a happy 11th birthday, and I hope you all enjoyed listening and taking this all in, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care everyone.